Hey, hey, howdy. In England, recently, uh, an airplane flew over top of a soccer match with a big banner that said this, White Lives Matter. Everybody got torn up about that, and, and people were saying, you know, we're investigating this, that's the police, and so many other negative comments. And I don't know, it almost implies that, that uh, white lives don't matter or something. I don't know. And, and people went on to say this, you know, we don't deserve to have people like that around us, and they don't deserve to be around football. It's a minority of our supporters, and on and on, all kinds of negative remarks, only because someone said that uh, white is okay. Basically, I, I guess people are thinking that this black lives matter and, and it should be all lives matter. And somebody might be thinking that maybe white should matter. I don't know. I mean, everything is upside down these days. Let me tell you about me. I mean, my wife has been missing for one week and the police came to see me last night and they said, prepare for the worst. So today, after this show, I got to go to the thrift shop to get all of her clothes back. <laughs> Okay, then come on. Edmonton, you got a premier there in Alberta, Jason Kenny. He says, you know, I am an unqualified Canadian patriot and all of you people who are talking about separation, you're crazy. Stop it. Don't do that. And he says it's a empty one, that threat. And, you know, it's a wrong path for Alberta and I can fix it. Just kind of give me some time. And so he said, hey, I'm going to do a fair deal. Thing. And he put a panel together and everyone's been waiting with bated breath and they finally came out and what was it? Nothing. Just nothing. Effectively nothing. It was lip service, you know, paid to what? A whole bunch of things. I mean, Albertans are still upset. I mean, they're being hammered every day and people are taken from them and they won't allow them to work and there's a couple of hundred thousand people that are unable to work. The province is a mess. It's a financial economical mess and, and spirits are low and, and everything and you got the premier saying oh, don't worry I'll deal with the feds. He can't. The feds it, there's no representation for provinces right. I mean it's a dictatorship country and he's talking like that. It's silly. Now he does have an issue because he's a highly credible new leader that has stepped forward now to lead the Wexit movement movement, Jay Hill. He's the former whip and house leader in Stephen Harper's federal conservative government, and he's now in charge of this Wexit movement, which is an entity that aims for Western Canada to separate from Canada. Western Canada, this is him talking, is, is never going to get a fair shake from the rest of Canada. Confederation does not work. It cannot work. It's not structured to work. While we love Canada, we're tired of not getting any love back. It's kind of like a marriage, right? I mean, you kind of do it forever and, and you want it to work, but even though you still have love for your partner maybe, you know it's time to move on because you're unhappy and things aren't getting done. And, and it's this, it's this. I mean, separation isn't a bad thing when you kind of put it all into a pot and stir it up. In the ever-expanding cultural well, revolution, that's what it is. Uh, you know, Kellogg cereal boxes now are on the list and uh, they're apparently symbols of, of racism. I figure that went out. You have a former Liberal Member of Parliament in London and uh, she has called on Kellogg's to justify why Rice Krispies are represented by three white boys. You can't even, I don't know, you can't even talk about this stuff. It's just so dumb. Bah! The federal government of Canada has now started to test a completely voluntary mobile contact tracing app in Ottawa to eventually be used nationwide. Well, firstly, when a government gets involved in anything that they say is voluntary, um, that's suspicious because that's not how they swing. I mean, particularly this government led by the private stake. I mean, they're commies through and through and while they might be testing it for this, it's kind of like Obama. I promise you can have a doctor of your choice under Obamacare. Well, of course, that was a lie. And, and they're lying too. I'm sure they're going to put little <clears throat> implants in it. So starting with apps, but they're going to be these little zzz things in your arm so they can track every movement. They're doing that now, but they're missing some people. They say this is to do with COVID. It will expand because governments typically, and that's why with gun control or any kind of control, people control, if you give them an inch, they want a foot and that foot soon becomes a mile. And in the prime estate case, I guess that would become a kilometer. Pepsi Cola was incorporated December 24th, 1902. I'm jumping. Y'all can keep up. Okay, then, in 1902 and May 31, 1923, Pepsi declared bankruptcy. They sold for $30,000 and PepsiCo products are now enjoyed by consumers 
more than 1 billion times a day, each and every day, in over 200 countries around the world, and they generate $67 billion in revenue per year. Kind of a nice story. It took a long time to kind of get there, but it's kind of cool. Now we have a joke. Uh, uh, just another one. Women may not like this. Cone of silence. Uh, cone of silence. Man joke. Maybe we'll get to a woman joke tomorrow. Cone of silence. You with me? Here it goes. Bzzz. I'm in my private world again. There was a guy. True story. It's a cowboy tombstone. He had five rules to follow, he said, and, <laughs> and he put all of this or had it put on his tombstone. Number one, if you want a happy life, number one, it's important to have a woman who helps at home, cooks from time to time, cleans up and has a job. Number two, it's important to have a woman who can make you laugh. Number three, it's important to have a woman who you can trust and doesn't lie to you. Number four, it's important to have a woman who is good in bed and likes to be with you. <laughs> number five, it's very, very important that these four women do not know each other. You could end up dead like me. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm back. You come back tomorrow. See ya.